All right, welcome to our first video for February's independent study. So uh, we are going to be talking um, for the month of February about baptism, penance, confirmation, and also um, the liturgical year or church year um, and the seasons that the church goes through. Um, so in this first video, we're going to go over baptism. Uh, it's the very first sacrament that anybody receives. It is the official adoption of each and every one of us into the church as um, children of God. And it is a very important sacrament because without it, um, we cannot start our journey within the church as God's children. Um, it really makes us a part of the family that the Catholic Church is. Um, and it's something that roots us to the church immediately, whether it's um, in our infancy or whether it's in our adulthood. So baptism um, is a rite that can be done either during mass or it can be done as a separate rite after mass or at a um, particular date that's decided on by the priest and the family. Um, and it contains a couple of different um, signs and symbols and rituals that go along with it. Um, first of all, the parents, if it is a child, um, will request baptism. The priest will make the sign of the cross over the child or the person. They will receive the oil of catechumens, which is a special, um, like a scented oil that's used for anointing. And that'll be used to make a cross on the chest over the heart. There will be a profession of faith, which is basically um, a series of statements to which um, if the person is an infant, um, the parents and the godparents will promise to each of these statements um, that they're going to make sure that they raise that child um, to avoid sin, to love God, um, to turn away from the devil, to be a member of the church, to be brought up with the teachings of the church. And an adult can make those promises on themselves if they're being baptized as an adult. Um, godparents are usually chosen at least one. Um, godparents are people who are um, practicing Catholics in good standing, who have been confirmed themselves. Um, and so they are full members of the church. And typically we try to choose people for godparents um, who are people that we are comfortable talking to, someone that we could go to if we had questions about our faith as well as people that will be in the child's lives and be active um, in being a positive influence on them and a positive presence in their life. Um, after this profession of faith, they will be um, anointed with oil on the head and again, the um, special sacred chrism. And then in the baptismal font, um, they will have water uh, sprinkled over or poured over their head and they'll be baptized, the priest will say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Trinity is the foundation of the Catholic faith and of the Christian faith in general. Um, the belief that God is um, three persons in one, um, God the Father, uh, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is particularly the Father that we receive in baptism as adoption um, into his family as his children. Um, Christ is most specifically received um, during the Eucharist, which we'll talk more about um, next month and as we prepare um, for your actual um, First Communion and for um, that special moment that you'll have on the Easter Vigil. Uh, but through that, you receive the body and blood of Christ. And then at Confirmation, which you'll go through next year, um, then you receive uh, the Holy Spirit in its fullness. So after this um, pouring on of the water, um, typically the person will either put on a white robe or will already be wearing white. Um, usually most infants will already have a white garment on and that is symbolizing that they've put on Christ, that they have um, put on the church. There'll also be a candle lit from the Easter candle, which symbolizes um, Christ as the light of the world that is now um, burning within that child or that person and um, the hope and prayer that that person will keep that light burning and then they will share that light with others. 
And after that, um, the child or adult is welcomed into the church. Um, baptism is only received once in someone's life. The only exception would be if you are baptized in a church that is not the Catholic Church. And for whatever reason, however they do baptism, they do not baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. However, um, most Protestant churches, um, like Lutherans, Baptists, um, they will baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you have been baptized in a Protestant church and wish to join the Catholic Church, usually you don't have to be baptized again because you have already received a baptism in the name of the Trinity. Um, so there's very few circumstances in which a baptism of some sort would be repeated. Um, but again, that would only be if the first baptism that was received was not a baptism in the sense that the Catholic Church would consider a baptism. Um, baptism can be received at any age. Obviously, um, if you are born to Catholic parents, it is most common to have baptism occur in the first year or two of life. However, a person can be baptized in their young adulthood, they can be baptized in their full adulthood, they can be baptized when they are elderly. There is no limit on um, when baptism can take place. Baptism is usually done um, by a priest or deacon within the church, someone who is ordained. Um, however, in the event of an emergency, such as um, someone being close to death or something like that, um, any person who is a member of the Catholic Church um, and is in good standing and is in a state of grace um, may administer the rite of baptism. Um, we hope that that wouldn't happen too often though and that the rite of baptism can be conferred by, again, a priest or a deacon within the church. Um, baptism is probably the most important step that um, parents can take in bringing their children to the church for the first time. Um, it is also an important step that an adult can make in joining the church themselves. Um, but it is not the end. Uh, it is only the beginning of a lifelong journey of being um, connected to God, to Christ, to the Holy Spirit, of growing in that relationship with God. It is only the beginning of your involvement with the church. It is only the beginning of your spiritual life. Um, and it's something that should be used as a springboard uh, for you to um, grow and seek the other sacraments and try to attend Mass as often as possible, to um, follow a mission and a vocation and participate in the life of the church somehow um, as a volunteer, as an employee, um, and really to immerse yourself into um, a life that is lived and led with um, Christ by your side. So first we have baptism and then we will uh, be discussing everything that comes after.